Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover creating and accessing variables using macros in SugarCube 2.36. When we were introduced to SugarCube, we learned it uses the concept of a macro. A macro is carried over from the earliest versions of Twine over into SugarCube. When we use a macro, we can affect things within a story. One of the most common uses of macro is in connection with another concept called a variable. In concepts, we talk about a variable as something we can store data in, access, and then do other things with it. Generally, we want to create, access, or compare. And those are the three things I'm going to cover in this video. So when we discuss variables, the word variable just means in English something that is able to be changed. Taken over into a programming context, this is, as we might think of, the metaphor of a bucket. We can put things into a bucket, take things out of a bucket, and compare what's in a bucket to something else. This is incredibly useful in a programming context when we want to save certain things. For example, we might want to save the number of lives in a video game, or compare statistics in a role-playing situation, or a number of other things. When we create interactive stories, the ability to create variables, these buckets we store things in, is incredibly useful because they allow us to create dynamic things, or adjust information, or interact in a number of different ways within the stories we create. In SugarCube, as I mentioned, we use this concept called macros. So when we write a macro within SugarCube, we use two less than symbols, the name of the macro, which sometimes called its keyword, and then two greater than symbols. Within that space, along with the name of the macro, sometimes we include something else known as an expression. SugarCube, as we know, is built on another language called JavaScript. While we don't necessarily need to know everything about JavaScript, one of the many concepts carried over into SugarCube is this idea of an expression. There are two important types of expressions that we need to know as we work with variables within SugarCube. The first is an assignment expression. Assignment is a description of assigning a value to a variable. The value of the variable goes on one side, there is a symbol between them, and the variable goes on the left. So I've gone pretty far into the explanation without looking at some code, so let's look at the code and then talk through what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up example one. So the set macro is one of a large number of macros available within SugarCube. And as mentioned in other videos, SugarCube shows off its greatest strength in its macros and how we use them. So in this case, notice we have the name of the macro, right? We have two less than symbols, name of the macro, something, in this case an expression, and then two greater than. Now, I want to highlight something. This right here that I've highlighted is an expression. In particular, it is an assignment expression. I am assigning the thing on the right to the thing on the left. Now, the left and right are a description of the thing in the middle. In this particular case is the English word to. In the second line right here is the sign equal. In either case, I'm taking the thing on the right and putting it in the thing on the left. The thing on the left is what we call a variable. There are two categories of variables within SugarCube. There are story variables, ones we create and exist as long as the story does. That is, until we close the tab or window. And temporary variables, where we might want to store something, but we don't particularly care if it gets destroyed or removed later. In this particular case, I'm using story variables, and we know this because they use the dollar sign. If we want a temporary variables, we use the underscore. There's one more thing we need to know about variables. Because SugarCube is based on another language, JavaScript, we have to follow JavaScript's rules about naming things. So when we're naming variables, we can use letters, numbers, and the underscore, but we can't use spaces and we can't use any other special characters. So in this particular case, the name of the variable is example. The category of variable is a story, notice the dollar sign, and I am assigning it, this is an assignment expression, the value on the right hand side, on the other side of the English word to. So I am saying set the story variable example to the value 5. And this is exactly the same right here on the second line. The second line is using the symbol that's common in JavaScript. The top line is using something that's part of TwineScript that is available within SugarCube. As we learn to use SugarCube, sometimes we can intermix 
parts of JavaScript and parts of the functionality provided by Sugarcube and whatever makes us feel most comfortable. And we can also switch between them as needed. So we can create a variable by assigning it a value, again, using an expression and assignment expression. Well, we spent a lot of time talking about creating variables and what they are. What if we want to use them in a particular way? Let's move to the last two examples and talk about how we might want to access and compare the value of variables. So in example two, we can access the value of a variable. Now notice in this case, I'm using a temporary variable. Notice the underscore in front of the name of the variable. Notice again, using the set macro and its value that I am assigning as part of this assignment expression and on the right hand side. Again, in English, this would be set the temporary variable lives to some value, some value is 10. But notice something a little bit interesting. Outside of macro usage, I just have lives right here by itself. And it says lives remaining underscore lives. Now let's go ahead and shift the start of the story to example two, come up to build, and let's go ahead and play. Notice it says lives remaining 10. So notice when we want to access the value of a variable, we can do it outside of a macro by using the variable along with what its category is, story or temporary. Now let's talk about one more way of accessing variables and what we do with them. So we can create variables, we can also adjust their values in the same way. We can access the value of a variable within a passage outside of a macro, but we want to compare the value of a variable to something else. Well, this is where things get slightly more complicated. Not too complicated, but slightly more. In this case, we want to create another kind of expression. I said there were two types of expressions I wanted to cover. The first being the assignment expression, and the second being the conditional expression. The conditional expression describes some comparison of one thing to another if the evaluation of the comparison is true, that it is currently correct, then something happens as a result. And this is where things get very exciting in a programming context, and especially in Sugarcube. This allows us to make things much more interactive and to react to things that the reader or player might be doing. Now, when we to compare things, when we want to create that conditional expression, we work a particular macro called if. The if macro defines, again, along with its keyword, some conditional expression, and then inside the macro, we do something if that condition is currently true, which is to say if the, the conditional expression evaluation is true, we do something. So let's look at an example to kind of put all of those terms into practice. I have right here, again, using the set macro to create the value of a variable. In this case, again, a temporary variable. Notice the underscore. Name the variable to 10. Set the temporary variable example to 10. And then immediately we're creating a comparison. So this is a comparison right here. And notice I'm using the English word is. So in this case, if the temporary, again, underscore, variable is 10. So if it is is equal to 10, do something. The do something is it is. And then notice we're doing this something different down here. There are some macros within Sugarcube that close themselves. The if macro is one of them, and there are fewer of them than there are other macros that are just one line, such as set, but they do exist. In this particular case, we are creating something right here and then closing it down here. And if you're familiar certain other markup languages, you might have seen something like this before. In this particular example, again, we're setting the temporary variable to 10, and then we're saying, oh, if the temporary variable example is 10, and it is, we show it is. So let's go ahead and build from over here. I will set the start story here to example three, and let's play. And we see it is, and this is correct. From the perspective of Sugarcube, the value of the temporary variable example is 10 because we just said it the line before. Now, the English word is, as part of this conditional expression, is one of a large number of different things available within TwineScript. Remember, this is the kind of shorthand that Sugarcube allows us to use. There are a large number of possible options. We can compare equality, inequality, greater than, less than, and a large number of other things. And I point you towards the Sugarcube documentation for the full listing of them. In this particular case, we want to know is something something else, and we use the English word is. 
Now, something else to remember when we're working with comparisons, that is creating those conditional expressions, is that because SugarCube is based on JavaScript, we can also use JavaScript as well. So the is English word here is pumped something that SugarCube supplies for us as a shorthand. We can also use the JavaScript equivalent of two equal signs right here as well. In fact, if I go ahead and play this, we will see the exact same result. Now, it is up to the author to decide if they prefer the SugarCube abbreviation or the JavaScript equivalent, and I leave that up to you as a listener or potentially as an author to decide which one you prefer. Both are perfectly valid. So let me go over everything I've talked about in this video as we come to an end here. So we often find ourselves in situations where we want to store and access different data within an interactive store. In a programming context, we call this particular concept a variable, which just comes in, into English from ancient Greek and means able to change. So we have something that's able to change. We often think of variables in the term of the metaphor of a bucket. We put things into a bucket, we take things out of a bucket, and we can check to see what's inside the bucket. When we translate that into a programming context, we often use the phrase value of a variable. So the variable is a thing holding some value. We can create and change the value variables within SugarCube by using the set macro. The set macro is a number of different macros we can interact with. And again, the greatest strength within SugarCube is its large availability of macros. We will cover far more in other videos. So we saw in example one, we can create the value of a variable using a assignment expression. The term expression just describes something we use with a macro. In this case, we would say in English, set the value of a variable to some value. Now, as we discuss variables, we also need to understand that there are two categories of variables, story and temporary. And these are described by the first starting symbol, the either dollar sign or underscore. And we saw how we can intermix the Twine script, abbreviations given to us by SugarCube, and also the underlying JavaScript symbols that mean the same thing. So we can create variables, we can change variables, and then as we saw as part of example two, we can access the value of those variables to show a reader a particular value. Finally, as we saw in example three, we can start to compare the value of a variable to other things to create more branching or dynamic experiences for readers as we create various interactive stories. Part of doing that is working with the if macro. The if macro allows us to create conditional expressions that we compare the value of a variable to some other value or create some other comparison. When we work with those, we also have access to the TwineScript English abbreviations. In this case, I'm using the word is, and there are a number of other abbreviations I could have used for other comparisons, greater than, less than, and a number of other things available within SugarCube. We can fall back if we have knowledge of, or if we'd like to use the, the equivalent in JavaScript as well. Thanks for watching.